So, let's do crazy. I was gonna do that. <laughs> Never mind. That's good. Alright, make it a little easier. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I, besides hurting myself, I'd hurt everybody else within 10, 10 feet of me. So, alright, so what I have for pictures, honestly, is the first one that is the one most, that, most dear to my heart is Press 20's dustpan. So, it is there and I appreciate it. So, that makes my day every day when I walk in. And I know third shift scrambles every morning to put it back. So, uh, one of the big things we're working on is uh, red sheets, all right? Red sheets, besides the fact of making re rejects and defects and mobile processing and all that, all those deadly things, we also waste a lot of motion doing red sheets, okay? So red sheets go put in the books, so first of all, they're generated. They go in the foreman's desk, foreman's desk, then my desk, my desk, then Anna to put them in, then Anna to put them in back out to the folders. When the folders are run, then it goes back over into my box over there for me to sign, then go back to Anna to put those in. Then they go back to the old folder. So we've got a we've got a plan in place. So we're going to try and you know get rid of that paperwork. So we're going to have that go paperless. So there's a big there's going to be a big improvement for those that we've got planned. Um, going through my desk drawer, I pulled the other one that Karen didn't take a picture of and make fun of me about. I don't know where Karen's at. But if you pulled that one open and seen a road atlas, I don't know anybody want a road atlas, because I actually have no need for one anymore. So, uh, cleaning out that drawer, and when we did the audit, I was not efficient at all. I wasted a lot of time finding training records because it wasn't easy to identify. Also, then, what's really cool is that we have a, a case for like a lot of the Kaizen events and like uh, organizing stuff, and it's the most disorganized thing I have in my office. So, that will change in the next week. And then also access inventory. Upstairs we have a lot of extra boxes that we need to get rid of and take care of. So it's just some of the things that areas that we're working on we need to improve. So okay. Then we have next Kaizen events. Please make sure you check them and make sure they're signed up. Okay. And then uh, also not next week, the week after. So the 23rd and 24th, uh, Elmer Hansen will be back for a board meeting. So we need to make sure we start cleaning now and getting organized. So. Uh, it's going to, again, walk it through, seeing the building and seeing what's going on. So let's start getting prepared for that. Start getting our presses cleaned up for the quarter so we don't have to worry about it last minute. Okay? All right, improvements. All right. So we, we, we fight for space, right? So we always talk about space and organizing. So we had a whole group of just shim stocks and just miscellaneous shim stocks and, uh, and when we keep rolls in it, correct Nick? Don't let, I don't want to put words in Nick's mom. Where's Nick at now? So we keep rolls in it, correct? So these are just leftover stuff that we just are throwing in a drawer just in case we ever need, right? So obviously, when we're at this point of whenever we need it, and if we can find it, that's fine, but whenever we need it, it's not always well used space. We're trying to reduce, I had a conversation with Bob about trying to reduce the amount of places we have stuff so we can have it all in one location, because we need more drawers for some useful stuff, stuff we use every day. So it's a great example of getting rid of that stuff. And also the pipe clamps, if you take a look, what's a better place to have the pipe clamps? Down here or on the bench? So Nick could put a couple holes in it and put them up on the bench and up off the floor. So it was a great job. So let's give Nick a hand for this. Thank you, Nick. Okay. All right. All right, so this is exciting reading here today, but there's a reason behind it, a little bit of explanation. All right. Internal Revenue Service is a revenue service of the United States federal government. The government agency is a bureau of the Department of Treasury and is under the immediate direction of the Commissioner, Commissioner of Internal Revenue. The IRS is responsible for te collecting taxes and implementation and enforcement of the Internal Revenue Code. The first income tax was assessed in 1862 to raise funds for the American Civil War with a rate of 3%. Today, the IRS collects over 2.4 trillion each tax year from around 234 million tax returns. American Civil War, George S. Boutwell was the first commissioner of the Internal Revenue under President Abraham Lincoln. In July of 1862, during the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln and Congress created the Office of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue and enacted a temporary income tax to pay war expenses. The position of the commissioner exists today as the head of the Internal Revenue Service. Internal, the Revenue Act of 1862 was passed as an emergency and temporary 
wartime tax. A, a copy the relatively new British system of income taxation in, instead of trade and property taxation. The first income tax was passed in 1862. By the end of the war, 10% of all union households had paid some form of income tax, and the union raised 20%, 21% of its war revenue through income taxes. After the Civil War, reconstruction, railroads, and transport, transforming the North and South war machines towards peacetime required public funding. However, in 1872, seven years after the war, lawmakers allowed the temporary Civil War income tax to expire. Income taxes evolved, but in 1894, the Supreme Court declared the income tax of 1894 unconstitutional. The federal government scrambled to raise money. In 1906, the election of President Roosevelt and later his successor Taft, successor Taft, the United States saw a populist movement for tax reform. This movement culminated during the during during then candidate Woodrow Wilson's election in 1912, and in February 1913, the ratification of the 16th Amendment to the United States Con Constitution. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without a point without appropriate appropriations among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. All right, the reason why I'm not talking about this is because I wanted to explain that we just went through an IRS audit for three days, okay? We try to do everything that we can to do the correct stuff, right? We went through it, they went through our, with our accountants and everything, so everything, one thing that I want to explain to everyone, since we're needs up, we're basically a trust fund for our IRA and our, our retirement, right? So we don't pay taxes. So one, our government's wasting all their time and money to audit somebody who doesn't pay taxes, okay? Because we pay our taxes when we, we cash out our lease off and, you know, for one pay, pay your IRA. So one, we wasted all that time, their time, our money, and then we had to pay our accountants to go through the, IRA, the, the audit and go through that. Now, the one thing that they came up with out of all the stuff they went through is our Christmas party. Every individual who gets something for a Christmas party, over $25 is supposed to be taxed. So this is, so the company trying to do something fun and entertaining for everybody, the government now comes back and says, anything over $25 you're supposed to be paid tax on. You should be taxing every individual who won anything or got anything. Okay, Romero's got to take a loan out for everything you want. So, uh, so, so, I just want to make sure you, so everything went fine, but I want to explain we did get audited, okay? So, if the Christmas party was a thing, we're not saying we're stopping it, you don't need to refer to that, but, uh, but, but we just, you know, I just want to make sure everyone's aware of what things happen outside or up front, like with our account and other things that, you know, we're trying to, Make sure everything's right and what's going forward, okay? Any questions on that that I, I possibly can answer? Are we going to get taxed? No, <laughs> you're not going to get taxed. you, So, I just gave you your home phone number and address, so that's all right. So, uh, I said one person, one at all. So, all right. So, any questions on that? Yes. Just pick, pick and draw. So, yep, first time. Yep, so there's just, there's nobody, no reason, no, you know, income statement or anything, just that we just got, you know, drawn, so. Yeah. No, there's no reason for anything going on. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, we, we talked about watching the video, so there's no sound to it, so it's a little bit harder, but we're going to watch the video of the Green Toys uh, assembly process that we're doing in the South Point, and so we can get an idea of what we're doing with this, and, uh, then we can come and talk about some of the waste that we see. I'll talk through some of it. All right, so this is a box. And Tom, Tom Cruise is very uh, well versed in this box. But if you look at this box, it's like how this has to go together. Okay, so one reason why they're doing this is because it, they, they don't want glue, per se, right now. So we have to, everything has to be a fold or a snap. And if you tie a Lewis on it, you spend it about a, about a minute on it every box. Okay, so now the assembly of the copter, you have the bottom piece of lodge, and then you got the cockpit, and then you got to put that little bear in it. And then with that bear, you have a, a little insert that goes over it to keep it from falling out or from the kids stealing it in the store, or adults stealing it in the store. All right, and then they put a, the opposite color 
on the top. So the bear always matches the bottom fuselage. Right? And then you gotta snap the skid or the landing gear, whatever you want to call it. Then we have to put it on and then we put the propeller on it. And actually that that piece of equipment now used to be two and now it pushes everything together at one time. So it snaps it all at one time. So needless to say that saved a lot of uh, a lot of time in the first place. I think it saved about 15, 16 seconds a unit. We didn't put the side propeller on. It was already on. We're going to be doing that at the press later on, but we don't have to try that. Because we can do that. We can pre-stage that since that runs totally full, full person sitting there. So we can take the small little propeller and put it on the press and assemble it. Okay. So we can do that away from the, the assembly line. Okay. So. Alright. So anybody see a lot of waste there? What, what kind of waste do we see? Motion? I think Jimmy say motion? Laura, Laura said the table's way too low. Table's too low? <clears throat> the box is up. So the box is up. Yeah, make it easier to grab them. Yep, closer together. We, 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 we change uh, all the, some of that stuff we've already implemented. Uh, we already tilted the boxes and actually made it a a square now instead of a, a U. So you just more rotate around and you're not walking. Um, is there a reason why the rotors have to be, or why the plastic things are there? So the yeah. rotors have to be lined up? Yeah, they're, they're at the location of the snaps that, that have to be pushed together. So you have to rotate the, the propeller just at 45 degrees so it doesn't get caught. Right. Can you put a stop so you just you don't have to try to position it? The, it's made right now to make better parts. If you didn't want to do that, you you have to you have to have a you have to do a change over between the seaplane and the helicopter. Okay. Yeah. But not saying we can't. So Tom, what is, I think we ended up about two minutes, right? It's about two minutes, and it's about a minute for a box and a minute for uh, assembly. Anything? Anybody else see anything else? What other ways we got? Obviously, well, the box um, right now it takes about between 50 and 60 seconds to, to uh, fold the box. What we did was we went through a redesign, so it's uh, you're not doing all the extra folds. It's uh, it's really one fold and then a snap at the bottom, so it takes it from 60 seconds to 10 seconds. And that, when you aggregate, you push out the the numbers there. It's the labor savings is about fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Just in that cost savings of the polling stuff. So. Uh, awesome limits. Yeah. So one of the just to give you an idea, so if taking two minutes apart or a minute apart, we have orders for forty thousand helicopters. Okay, forty thousand is a hundred and fifty thousand dollar order. They want it as soon as possible. So if you can I calculate that math, basically that takes it, it's gonna take us forty days, five, six weeks just to assemble that. Okay, so we're trying to cut down time, so uh, I just want to give you guys an idea of what the orders are like too, so that's why we're running them all off, because that lead time for delivery is way out there, so it takes a long time to get them all together, okay? So again, it's a, it's a, it's a nice diversification to our sales, the toys are something new, it's going to keep us busier towards fall, because they're Christmas mostly, that's where we need to get back to sometime in October, or August, September, October. So it's a good good point for our sales. So uh, and right now, I think it's that just for the July order is one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's a lot of money to go So any questions? Yes. I was just wondering about pulling the part out to put it on the helicopter. You know, like I was pulling out the box. Yep. I believe was like some kind of two or three feet or exceptional. Yeah. So like the uh, barrel thing stuff that we have the box that had a, a yeah like a ramp for itself on So what yep, yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do is keep remember this and then after today we're gonna take another video today where we're at, so we'll go through it again, like take taking some of the suggestions, so we'll see where we're at. So okay. So we can get an idea of better better uh well, better improvements, okay? Any questions? Are you doing it at the assembly line? No.
it's going to be one one kind of spot at each time. So, so we might have to have one person put the box together while one person's doing the other because there's one thing at each basically. So when they come down with one, each one goes in and it's a finished box and it's got a skew on it ready to go. So it'll be, it'll be one piece flow. So, alright, any questions? Alright, thank you. Alright, thank you for the question. Thank you.